Something I hear people talk about all the time is how they feel guilty for not playing the consoles they own more than they do. Well, why not just feel guilty for not playing the consoles you don't own while you're at it? And I know you can do it. We humans are good at feeling guilty about stuff. I still feel guilty for accidentally giving a kid a bloody nose in kindergarten, you know? Maybe I should give him his game back. Either way, you might be feeling guilty too once you get a load of some of these consoles you've been ignoring. Or, you know, you won't. But either way, here we go with four consoles that I feel are the best ones that don't get as much attention as they deserve. First up, we've got the PC Engine, or as some folks who think it sucks like to call it, the TurboGrafx-16. And I say that because people who call it the PC Engine are far more likely to be fans of it. Not that there aren't fans who call it the TurboGrafx-16, but it was called the PC Engine in Japan, you know, where it first came out and was wildly more successful, which of course meant way more games released. A lot of which were really good, but people in other parts of the world may not have known about them, or still don't. But even the games that were released outside of Japan never took off in popularity in places such as the United States, the way games on consoles like the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis did. Consoles whose popularity always overshadowed the TurboGrafx-16, to the point that a lot of people didn't even know it existed. But that's the thing about popularity. In retrospect, we don't always get things right. Like handy snacks. To which you might be thinking, whoa, whoa, I like my crackers with questionable cheese and a red plastic stick. Well, not as much as you should like Soldier Blade, among other awesome shoot 'em ups that can be played on the PC Engine. Oddly enough, the console's library of shoot 'em ups is so strong that it sometimes gets held against it by people who don't like the genre and assume the console doesn't have enough good games in other genres to be worth their time. Well, not so fast. The PC Engine has plenty of great games in other genres too. You might think you already have enough side-scrolling platformers that feature kids with large heads until you try out the bonk games. Staples for the console, among other bangs, such as Splatterhouse, Devil's Crush, Parasol Stars, and arguably the best Castlevania game from that time, Rondo of Blood. One final thing that deters people from this console, all the different hardware available and the decisions you'd need to make if collecting for it. Quick little flow chart for ya. I've always felt like figuring out the hardware for this console is like a rite of passage for any prospective TG-16 enthusiast. When you can explain what something like a Super System card is, boy what a feeling. It shows in the way you walk. That said, if you don't want to horse around with all the hardware, you can always go a simpler route, like a Mini or Raspberry Pi. Alright, and next up we've got the Xbox. Now, let me just throw something out there that you can tell me is either correct or incorrect. You think Xbox sucks, don't you? Otherwise, why would you pay a lot more money for the exact same games on the GameCube or PS2 when you could pay less for the Xbox version and a version that in a lot of cases is a better version of the game due to the sheer power of the Xbox. I mean, with a console this size, you better believe it's got some power. Now, granted, there are some instances where people will argue the Xbox version isn't the best. For example, NBA Street benefits greatly from the PS2's extra shoulder buttons that are ideal for the various turbo button combinations you'll be pressing constantly. But for the most part, the Xbox version is going to be the best and, like I mentioned already, usually the cheapest too. Plus, you don't even necessarily need the Xbox to play Xbox games. All you need is an Xbox. They make it simple for you. If it's black, it's a box, and it's got X's on it, then you can probably play your original Xbox games on it. Well, almost. 
but if you have any of the Xbox One or Xbox Series consoles, you know, the newer ones, they can play original Xbox game discs. Not all of them, but certain ones, and generally the more popular ones. They don't actually run off the disc, but they give you a free downloaded version if you have the disc inserted. So if you want to do the I'm using a physical copy of a game dance, then dance away. Not only that, but these versions of the games often come with improved resolutions, frame rates, and other enhancements as well. If you're using an Xbox 360 though, which also offers backwards compatibility in its own way for certain games, the results aren't always as great. When it comes to exclusives for the original Xbox, I would personally recommend some of the Sega games, games that can feel like they belong on the Dreamcast. And last but not least, gotta recommend the controller, not the Duke, the controller S that I have here. I've said it before, but this controller has my favorite ergonomics of any that I've ever held. Yes, I do mean that. It's very good. Not good enough to change your mind on sixth generation games if you don't like them, but if you are a fan of that generation of games, I'd give the Xbox some consideration. Next up, we've got the Sega Saturn. This choice was probably pretty expected by a lot of you, but expected for good reason. It deserves to be on here. Most fans of the Saturn would jump in front of a moving bus for this thing. I don't let mine leave the house, so I don't have that problem, but this console's library has three main things going for it that I like to highlight arcade games, Sega games, and 2D games. The Saturn excels at all three, and for many retro gamers, yeah, you're probably going to be into at least one of those three. I mean, otherwise, that would almost be like saying you're a fan of awesome stuff, but not liking any of these three things. Similar to the PC Engine, the Saturn was popular in Japan, but not the United States. Japan just seems to always know what's cool. PC Engine, Sega Saturn, heated toilet seats, but then again, we've got mystery cheese crackers and red plastic sticks. In addition to our very expensive versions of US Sega Saturn releases, if you're looking to collect. So do yourself a favor and go for the Japanese releases when you can. Most games don't require much reading and a lot of the Japanese releases have English menus anyway. All right, and for the final console that I'll be talking about, it's a bit of a dirty dog decision on my part, which would be the Sega CD. Considered by some to be an add-on and not its own console, whatever you want to call it, you're probably still ignoring it. I mean, if you've already got a Sega Genesis, you've pretty much got the Sega experience, right? Well, I'd say so, but it can get even more awesome when you throw the Sega CD into the mix. Unfortunately, the reputation of the Sega CD for many folks is that you might as well attach a dog turd to your console. At least that would be free. CRTs are getting harder to find by curbs and lawns, but I still find plenty of dog turds. The main reason the Sega CD gets a bad rap is because people associate it with the very cheesy FMV games of the time because... Sega wanted us to, promoting these games heavily. But to heck with that, just ignore them and go for some of the good games that are not like that, unless you're into those. But either way, the Sega CD has some games that are more like Genesis games, but just with scaling effects and CD quality music. In some cases, they're enhanced versions of Genesis games, which I'd still say are very worthwhile, but there's some unique games as well. Unfortunately, they can be expensive, but fortunately, they can also be not expensive. Not to mention, it's fairly easy to get these games running on something like a you guessed it Raspberry Pi. The Sega CD has a nice selection overall of different games, offering varying kinds of experiences, and I love love the way it bolsters the already strong lineup of games you get with the Genesis. And for what it's worth, I do occasionally hear from people who enjoy playing the cheesy FMV games 
even if they're just playing them to laugh at them. You know, the whole so bad it's good dynamic, which doesn't work for everything. But if you're choosing between a Sega CD and 32X to attach to your Genesis, I've always felt the easy choice is the Sega CD. But that about does it for the consoles that I wanted to talk about. My advice when evaluating consoles is to not just go by their surface reputation. Ask yourself, wait a second, are there good games if I look deeper? And while you're at it, ask yourself, have I done something nice for myself today? Trust me, it'll make you feel better. I would say though, in all seriousness, don't feel guilty if you don't have these consoles. As long as you're enjoying the consoles you already own, then I think you're doing all right. You don't need to play every console and live your life feeling guilty for the ones you don't. Feeling guilty for the 10 minutes you watch this video is probably enough. That said, I'd love to hear which other consoles you feel don't get enough love. And remember, they could be consoles that you already own. Watch out for jealous consoles. If you think they don't take it personally, you can think again. But with that, leave your thoughts down below and I will see ya in the next video. He's the Red Trooper, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the Red Trooper.